appropriate sites. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of planning that goes into creating an industry of the size that we have in Tel Aviv that will be re relocated to Jerusalem. So we have to locate a site. We'll have to do a lot of building planning, but we're going to start the process. Uh, that's what the president has directed us to do. Obviously, it'll take some time before that would actually be a reality. Uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson discussing the fact that, you know, talking about moving the embassy and moving the embassy are two different things. Uh, but the, the, the motion is going to get started at least after the 20 some years. I mean, how long has it been? 1996 is when we first passed this law talking about moving the embassy to Jerusalem. And Rex Tillerson saying they're not going to start looking at at the at the actual move. It could take could take a couple of years, but a major announcement yesterday and a lot of reaction from around the world. And I, we just got lucky because my friend uh, Kevin Howard is here from uh, Christian Friends of Israel, and uh, he happens to be in town for the holidays to visit grandkids and family. I'm sure, but spends most of his time. Uh, in Israel, in Jerusalem, correct, Kevin? In Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. welcome back to the show, buddy. <clears throat> Thanks, man. It's good to see you. It's always great to see you, too. You, you up and leave, and then this happens. So you were probably on a plane somewhere when the president made this announcement, huh? Well, I came yeah. in Monday night, oh, and did you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it popped up Wednesday, and yeah, I got a few, com few phone calls. Yeah, I'll bet you did. I'll bet you did. Uh, what's your reaction to what the president announced? I, I think it's about time that somebody stood up and said, this is the capital of a nation that has always said this is our capital. You know, back to uh, the days of King David and, and the uh, the kingdom there and the temple that Solomon built. Jerusalem has been the capital. I thought the uh, the mayor of Jerusalem, um, Burkett is his name, right? Near Burkett. Near Burkett. He, he made a, a great statement yesterday when he said, you can't put a shovel in the ground here without finding the roots of Israel or Judaism, and I, I thought it was it was well stated because a lot of the the mosques and the holy sites that have been built are built on the foundations that were put there by King David. Correct? Absolutely, and sometimes on top of the ceilings of the previous so many hundred years. Because as they've done the archaeology, there's a great big archaeological site. It's what's called the City of David. It's to the south of the old city. The old city is the Crusader period city. Right. But uh, the city of David, archaeological dig, they took a parking lot up, and when they did, they started digging down, and by the time they got three meters down, they were finding ash from the second temple destruction, where they actually burnt the temple and raised the temple in 70 AD. It, it's, uh, the, yeah, the history is, ju is just... Um mind-boggling actually what what uh, same thing in rome when i was there i know that every time they go to build to tear something down and build a new building as soon as they stick the shovel in the ground they find some ruin then they have to stop because there's there's uh, some historical significance to it um th th there's been a lot of discussion this day of, of rage they're calling for and violence that's going to be committed what i've said that the elephant in the room here is that a lot of these folks who are who are claiming they're going to commit violence because of this decision are people who want Israel to vanish from existence to begin with. I, I, the, the, this is nothing new for them. This hatred that they're showing is nothing. This is just an excuse because this designation doesn't change anything really that's going Absolutely on in Jerusalem not. right now. Absolutely. You're correct. And, and it's, it's a problem when you're trying to deal with someone who that is their response to not getting what they want. You know, I'm going to have a day of rage. I'm going to start bringing up violence. I'm going to be a violent person if you don't give me what I want, because that's my starting point of the negotiations. Give me what I want. Hey, we, we had that here in the Jason Stockley case in reaction to that verdict here recently, right? So it's, it's difficult because when you're dealing with an ideology, which is really the root issue here of an ideology where from tiny children, they're taught to hate a particular people. You know, hate the Jews, kill the Jews. I always go back when we talked, there was a study done a few years ago. They put out a poll amongst Israeli, Palestinian, Muslim Arabs who are Israeli citizens. Okay, who, living, live, who live in, in, Israel. in Israel. And two of the questions that popped up, overwhelming response was, one, do you feel you have the right to kill Jews? And the response was yes. It's part of the makeup of their understanding. And it was a high margin of people that said, yes, I, I feel I have that right. The second part that popped up so big was, if you were given your own state under Palestinian authority rule, would you like to leave Israeli rule and go to Palestinian rule, or would you like to stay under Israeli rule? Overwhelmingly, I'd like to stay in Israel. 
because they understand I'm in, a, I'm in a democracy, and they see the life under Palestinian Authority rule. So it's kind of a polar opposite of understandings. I, I know as you were driving over here, you heard the phone call I took earlier from Daryl. Sometimes I don't even punch him up when he calls in. But he said some pretty outrageous things about Israel and uh, referred to it as a, as a very racist city he felt like when he was there uh wh- what was your reaction to some of his comments well it's part of the propaganda machine that's out there that it's an anti-israel anti-zionist anti-semitic rhetoric uh it's part of the bds movement the boycott divest sanction movement mm-hmm. against israel and part of that is trying to take the words of apartheid from south africa where there actually was a situation of apartheid and apply it to israel which is just not factual because there is no way you can apply it when you've got uh, Arab population in uh, the Knesset. You have members uh, who are able to speak their voice. What, what I really felt about Daryl was that he really needs to come to my neighborhood and take a look <laughs> around of what I see every day. Because when I ride the bus, I have Arabs and Jews and Christians all sitting together on the bus just trying to get to work. Uh, I have a park a few blocks away from where I live. You go there on a Shabbat, on a Saturday morning, great weather. You see five or six kids playing on the playground all together. And you look over, and there is a Muslim family sitting down on the park bench. And the very next bench is an Orthodox Jewish family sitting 12 inches apart. Two couples and their kids are playing together on the playground. And right next door to me, they're building a brand new synagogue, a Jewish house of worship. And every morning, the bus arrives on the main street. And five, six, seven Arab workers come out and come into that synagogue and work on that synagogue. They're laying the stone. They're pouring the concrete. They're cutting the rebar. It's all working together. And that's the part that people don't see. And in some cases, it's the part they don't want to see. Absolutely. Because they hear a filtered version of what goes on over there, I'm sure, in, in U.S. media. And I wonder what kind of media i mean when i've traveled internationally and i even heard the president joke about this when he was in china that the one of the biggest problems they have in china is that the only american news he could get was cnn international Mm -hmm. i I wonder how how, what is that situation uh, when you're in in jerusalem in israel and you want to can you just go on the satellite and get fox news or do the do they mostly carry some international version of CNN as the American news source there. Well, you get both. If you ha- if you subscribe to satellite or to cable systems there, you can get uh, American television. Okay. Uh, you can also get the European television. Um, I don't want to give a plug for anybody, but I use Roku over there. It works yeah. great for the internet. <laughs> but uh, I, I can get France 24, Sky News, CBS uh, in, all kinds of different newscasts. And it's interesting to watch the narrative change from one to the other. And you can really, after being in Israel, you can really pick up on the nuances of things the way that they bend, the things that don't get reported, or the things that only get half reported. Kevin Howard is my guest. He's from a Christian Friends of Israel, this charity. Uh, you do uh, the Lord's work in Israel, in Israel for Jews, right? I mean, I've joked with you that, it, that it's, it's, it's a Jesus for Jews organization. But honestly, not Jews you, for Jesus. You, you, don't, you, don't, you didn't go there to recruit you're not there evangelizing and recruiting, but you're just there to serve. I think that is fantastic. We are there to serve. Absolutely. Yeah. It's more humanitarian based. And uh, what we tell people is we're trying to make a difference one life at a time. We r- literally go into the lives of the people and help them where they are. You know, we have people to get behind in their rent. They can't pay uh, for utilities. Uh, they've lost a job. Maybe they have an injury. Maybe it was a terror attack. Maybe somebody got stabbed on a bus. And we go to the homes. We let them know that there are Christians around the world that pray for them and support them. There's people all around who care about their nation and their people. Uh, And then we're standing in solidarity with them. But uh, also giving them the tangible help that they're supposed to have as a charity. People of all nationalities, too, I'm guessing, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. backgrounds, yeah. Yeah, whether it's Arabs or Jews or Christians. Uh, when we come back, uh, Kevin's going to hang around for our next segment. Uh, you can go to their website. at uh, cfijerusalem.org is the, is the website for Christian Friends of Israel. But I want to talk a little bit about 
all of this discussion about a two-state solution and and really what that means from the perspective of people that live in Israel. So I want to pick Kevin's brain on that when we come back. We can get to some of your phone calls, too, if you have questions for Kevin. 314-969-9797, 866-455-9797. And, uh,